I would I'd like to trust Trey. But Cassandra hates me so much, and I know they're like really good friends. Mm -hmm. I know people say she's not like a she's not like a physical threat. She's good mentally though. And if no one takes Karen out, she'll go all the way to the final four. Like she'll just float the whole way. Mm. And she'll take one of her spots. Mm hmm Okay. Just scared that you know I was under the radar, mm -hmm. and she's not necessarily really under the radar. And I feel like I'm scared that she could like you know get in trouble. No, you're you're because I know that if you, people want to get rid of Dre, uh -huh. I'm gonna be the best one ever to be put next to her. Yeah. If people go after Dre, they're going to pick you up. For sure. I would be a fool next to I just want you to know for sure. I would, I would never put you up. I would never. And like, I would love to work with Dre and actually talk to her, but I'm scared because Cassandra. But that's just me being, like, scared. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're you're protected by Dre. Yeah. People are more scared of her than you. Yeah. I know, but like, I don't want to be the freaking bond. Exactly. Yeah. But whenever people go after someone. They put up their closest friends. So mm -hmm. Like Dimitri went after Dylan, so we put up Emily. Mm, I know. Yeah. Nana went after Cassandra, so she put up Jackie because they were a good friend. So if people go after Dre, they'll put up William. I know. Which is scary. Are you are the only one who want to go after Karen, or do you think there's a lot of people who want to go after Karen next week? I don't think people are going to go after Karen. But that's me personally. Mm. Like, obviously, please don't tell anyone. No, sure. But that's me personally. That's the biggest threat to me. But I don't think a lot of people are going to go after Karen. No, me neither. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Mm. I'm not hungry at least, though. Right now, who you would say like you like fully trust in the team? <laughs> fully trust? Um, I 
That's hard because returning players, like the vets, they're, they're vicious. They're all here to win. Like they're vicious. They'll, they'll mm -hmm. cut anyone. Fully trust. Hey, Dre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a bitch, Dre. <laughs> Thanks, Dre. Like, I don't, there's people who wouldn't go after me. Like, Bruno for my season wouldn't go after me. Mm -hmm. Netta didn't go after me this week. Cindy wouldn't go after me. Like, but do I fully trust them? No, but I just know they wouldn't go after me. No, you don't. You don't trust Bruno. I mean, one hundred percent. Like Bruno and I, are, like are working together, of course. Mm -hmm. It'd be stupid to lie about that. Mm -hmm. But he's vicious. Like he's here for himself, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. We didn't get along our season. No, I don't remember that. No, we were we were on opposite sides. Mm. Morning sermon. Sermon. What is it called? No morning sermon. What? Morning is sermon. it canceled? No. Yeah. What is morning sermon? I will not. While I'm on slop, I just can't do it. What? Ooh. Kevin. You promised. I did not promise. Do you not. Did. Do not say. <laughs> you made a promise. I did not promise anything. So obviously Kevin's not a man of his word. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing, that's the only thing. yeah. That's the reason I woke up today. It's for morning it's ceremony. Such a liar. Right, it's one of the only things that we actually have to look forward to. It is, no, it's not one of, it's the only thing we have to look forward to. <laughs> we have nothing going on for us right now. Except so Moses. You're not going to tell us a book of Moses? I can tell you the story of Moses, yeah, if we get, if we get like a little... Moses, for sure. is the one who separated the water? Now you're feeling it. Uh, Atta boy, Kev. Fuck, the Moses, I'll have to go over it. It's complicated. There's a lot of intricacies. We'll just think about it's, it. We'll, did you think, shower? We really that? don't have much going on for us as a house right now. No. We don't. There's not a lot of No, momentum. that's why we're depending on it's you, Kevin. a lot Kevin. of disparity, yeah. and we need you. I wonder how we need, entertaining We, it's we need the good, we need good word of Jesus. Yeah, we, we need, need God our spirits. Give us the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> You want to start later? Yeah, I'm not in the mood right now. Maybe later. Why don't you tell us a Jesus story, Emily? Okay. Well, Jesus, your bitch, in a in some flip flops. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how did he get, he get his hair so nice? Jesus? Uh huh. He rinsed, lathered, but didn't repeat. Oh. And that's honestly the Jesus. That is the trick. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Because mm -hmm. it strips your hair of all the essential oils when you repeat, right? Oh. It does. Okay. It does. So that's how Jesus had. Ask me more. I mean, I know everything. Okay. Um, how did he get his skin to look so flawlessly tanned? He would rub some dirt on it every <laughs> night before bed. Get the mud, mix in the dirt. Mm. Um, he would bathe in it. Mm. And, just, and I hear mud is actually like an exfoliant. It's good for your skin. It is? Yeah. Did you hear he that? He would then? just what? let it dry. That mud's an exfoliant? I said that. I know. You, that's, is that what you heard? You heard that? Oh, thing? it is an exfoliant. Yeah, though. people do mud baths. Yeah, people do mud. They go. They go to spas and they get mud baths and they're like, "I want the Jesus spa." Yeah, and that's <laughs> how they know. I want the Jesus look. <laughs> the Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then he. Um, what did he wear as clothing? It was. Like uh, we had like the pool a... table yesterday. And the pool. It was casual. We don't have that today. No, oh. we don't. A lot of people didn't know that they made casual. Or for the next then, three days. Uh -huh. And Jesus had the softest. I'm sure we're going to have a twist casual. today. Softest but Jesus is not kill, so like it was like. like a task? It's still alive or a twist. as he wore it. Yes. Mm. Because cashmere mm -hmm. obviously comes right. from cashmerian. That would be cool. Cashmerian cat. No. Like yes. The toilet paper. <laughs> because they have cats on. I <laughs> fully trust. Um, 
hard because the returning players, like the vets, they're they're vicious. They're all here to win. Like they're vicious. They'll, they'll mm. cut anyone. Fully trust. Hey, Dre. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> You're such a bitch, Dre. Really. <laughs> Thanks, Dre. Like, I don't, there's people who wouldn't go after me. Like, Bruno for my season wouldn't go after me. Mm -hmm. Netta didn't go after me this week. Cindy won't go after me. Like, but do I fully trust them? No, but I just know they wouldn't go after me. No, you don't. You don't trust Bruno. I mean, hundred percent. Like, Bruno and I, are, like, are working together. Of course, mm -hmm. It'd be stupid to lie about that. Mm -hmm. But he's vicious. Like, he's here for himself. You know. Mm -hmm. okay. We didn't get along our season. No, I don't remember that. No, we were. We were on opposite sides. Mm. Morning sermon. Sermon. What is it called? No morning sermon. What? Morning sermon. Is it no. canceled? Yeah. What is morning sermon? I will not. While I'm on slop, I just can't do it. What? Oh. Kevin. You promised. I did not promise. Do you not. Did. Do not say. <laughs> you made a promise. I did not promise anything. So obviously Kevin's not a man of his word. <laughs> that's the only thing. That's the only thing. Yeah. That's the reason I woke up today. It's for morning ceremony. Such a liar. Right, it's one of the only things that we actually have to look forward to. It is. No, it's not one of. It's the only thing we have to look forward to. <laughs> we have nothing going on for us right now. Except so Moses. You're not going to tell us a book of Moses? I could tell you the story of Moses, yeah, if we get, if we get, like, a little... Moses, for sure. is the one who separated the water? Now you're feeling it. Uh, Atta boy, Kev. Fuck, the Moses, I'll have to go over it, it's complicated, there's a lot of intricacies. We'll just think about it's, it. Did you, you think, shower? We really that? don't have much going on for us as a house right now. No. We don't. There's not a lot of No, momentum. that's why we're depending on it's you, Kevin. a lot Kevin. of disparity, yeah. and we need you. I wonder how we need, entertaining we, it's we, need good, we need the good God. word of Jesus. Yeah, we, we need, need God. Lord. spirits. Give us the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start later? Yeah, I'm not in the mood right now. Maybe later. Why don't you tell us the Jesus story, Emily? Okay. Well, Jesus, your bitch, in a in some flip flops, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, How did he get, he get his hair so nice, Jesus? Uh huh. He rinsed, lathered, but didn't repeat. Oh. And that's honestly the Jesus. That is the trick. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Because mm -hmm. it strips your hair of all the essential oils when you repeat, right? Oh. It does. Okay. It does. So that's how Jesus had. Ask me more. I mean, I know everything. Okay. Um, how did he get his skin to look so flawlessly tanned? He would rub some dirt on it every <laughs> night before bed. Get the mud, mix in the dirt. Mm. Um, he would bathe in it. Mm. And, just and I hear mud is actually like an exfoliant. It's good for your skin. It is? Yeah. Did you hear he that? He would then? just what? let it dry. That mud's an exfoliant? I said that. I know. That's, is that what you heard? You heard that? Oh, thing? it is an exfoliant. Yeah, though. people do mud baths. Yeah, people do mud, they go, they go to spas and they get mud baths and they're like, I want the Jesus spa. Yeah, and that's <laughs> how they know. I want the Jesus look. <laughs> the Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then he, um, what did he wear as clothing? It was uh, like We had like the pool a... table yesterday. And the pool. It was casual? We don't have that today. No, oh. we don't. A lot of people didn't know that they made casual Or for the next then, three days. Uh -huh. And Jesus had the softest. I'm sure we're going to have a twist casual. today. Softest but Jesus is not kill, so like it was like. like a task? It's still a lot. Or a twist. As he wore it. Yes. Mm. Because cashmere mm -hmm. obviously comes from right. cashmerian. That would be cool. Cashmerian cats. No. Like yes. The toilet paper. <laughs> because they have cats on it. Uh huh. I think that that's where the uh, toughness comes from. <laughs> The Kashmirian cats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kashmir cat. Dylan, tell us about like your best fight ever. 
Oh, yeah, tell us a boxing Jesus, story. Huh? Um, oh, oh, yeah. Talk about Jesus. Moses. <laughs> no, tell us a boxing story. Yeah, you like your most Like, go into details, like your training. You ever throw up? Oh, yes, I have. You threw up? Yeah, after the fight. So it was like, it was like uh, three weeks before the fight, and my promoter calls me. The card switched, the fight card switched. I had to go fight on a different fight, like a fight card. And, but I had to lose 18 pounds in like, in like a week and a half in order for me to weigh in. Under, I had to be under 210. And I was walking around at like 228, like 230, mm -hmm. something like that. And I had never cut weight at that time. And we so had to knock him out or else I was going to get robbed. But So you destroyed him, but they didn't give you the victory. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I beat the hell out of him. And, uh, yeah, if I had had, like, two more rounds, it was only a four-round fight. If I had had, like, two more rounds, I would have I would have won for sure I'd, or knocked him out. So Did after... you something after you weighed in? I tried, but I was throwing it up. Mm. I puked, like, six day, or six times of the day of the fight. Oh. Yeah, it was tough. It was shitty going walking into the fight, but... Then, I, so after the fight, I'm taking pictures and talking to people and signing autographs and stuff like that, and he's getting sh like shuttled, like carted out of the, the venue with his hood up, going to the hospital. Mm. And it, f so pissed off. So then I go back to my dressing room and somebody stole my check. That was the only reason I took the fight because I needed the money really bad. So somebody stole my check. It was at, it was at the H Hotel, downtown mm. Toronto. Mm. And but I like what can someone do with a stolen check anyways? If that's what the whole point, that's, like, that was my whole point. I, but I fucking lost it. Flipped the tables over, punched the door off the hinges. Like wow. ri I ripped the the Hilton Conference Center's room apart. <laughs> really, like, please, sir, please, sir, please. Fuck you. Where's my fucking? I was losing it, losing it. F flipped all the tables over, threw chairs in through the wall, and I was Dylan. losing it. Bad. That's the only reason I went. That's the only reason. But can't I, you get the check like? Yeah, read it. Did, did it get reissued? Yeah, it took me three months to get my money. But for you, that you got it eventually. Yeah. It's just at the time. Yeah, at the time you just, you just went through a hard fight. I had to. I, I was a dickhead for like two weeks leading up to it because I had to. I couldn't eat. Like I couldn't eat any food. And then and then they robbed me of a win of a sure win. Like everybody told me I won the fight. And they took that from me. Then they take my check. Like I just, I had enough, and I fucking lost it. Is this fight online? Like, can you watch it? No, they took the, all, they took all videos offline. They wouldn't give me a copy of the video. That's the only fight I don't have a copy of the video. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, because they know what happened. They, they know. And then they wouldn't give me a rematch. TSN said it. ESPN said it. All said the same thing. Like that was a bullshit decision. A terrible, terrible loss for Dylan Big, Dylan Carmen. Yeah, that was a tough pill to can swallow. Can you appeal a decision? You can in the amateurs, you can't in pro. Are you pro? Yeah. That's gangster. He's the proest of the pros. I know. Yeah. I'm literally the baddest man in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Kevin Martin, but I, know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more. Tell us more fights. What was like the best fight you've ever had? So that would be for the Canadian heavyweight title. I got, I was, I, I as far as I was concerned, I had retired from boxing. I was working a, working a job, living in Peterborough. And, uh, and then I just got a call one morning going to work. It was like 6.30 in the morning. This guy calls me. His name's Les Woods. And he called me and he's like, uh, you know, Dylan Carmen, I, 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 uh, I've been looking for you. And I'm like... What's going on, buddy? And Beautiful woman. And he's like, uh, he's like, I think I got the opportunity of your life, like an opportunity of a lifetime. Do you want it? And I didn't even know what it was, and I said yes. Mm -hmm. It was three weeks till the fight, so like it was like 22 days to the fight. And the other guy had three, like three and a half months notice for the fight, and I only had three weeks. And I was I wasn't in good shape at all, but I took the fight anyway. And uh, he's like six four, two fifty five. And I was like, I'm 6'6", six, six, and I was, I think I was like 228 or something like that, or 226. And I had a really bad elbow injury. Like even walking to the ring, I'm like, I'm, they put me on a little platform and film me. It was on TSN, so they put me on a little platform and film me. And I throw like a combination on the camera and like, oh, like my elbow hurts so bad I couldn't even throw a punch. Uh, and then he, so the fight starts, it was like, going into the fight, my family said, you know, 
no win, lose, or draw. Not too many people get the opportunity to stand where you're about to stand, so take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And that that's all that was replaying in my head. Nobody gets to stand where you stand, so take advantage of it. You know what I mean? I'm the 29th Canadian heavyweight champ in the history of the country. So we've been a country for like 150 years, right? Mm -hmm. So walking to the ring, my elbow was fucked. I was not in good shape, you know, all this stuff. And then uh, it was a war. He knocked me down twice. He knocked me down first in the second round with a big shot. Jumped right back up. And then knock, he knocked me down again in the fifth. But I knocked him down like seven times. He just wouldn't go down because the better shape, like the better shape you're in, mm -hmm. the, the more punches you can take. So, but it was a war. I blacked out. Uh, I don't remember. I remember them announcing my name when I'm in the ring, and I don't remember anything until the very last second of the fight. And when the ref was calling the fight, that's, a, that's the next thing I remember. And then I blacked out again. So was, I was blacked out that time for 45 minutes fighting on instinct or something. Wow. I don't, I don't know what it was. Does that happen often? Like, you don't it's really never happened remember to me. the fight? I've had, 80, I've had 80, 88 fights. I've never, it's never happened before. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, 88? yeah, wow. it was just a battle. Just a, it was an all out war, but I feel like it was like, was I, the crowd going nuts. Were they? Oh it? yeah. I, I wish they would play it. Country, con like 4,000 people <laughs> just screaming country, country. That's sick. And then it was in Maple Leaf Gardens too, Cool. which is pretty sick. But he was the champ and you had to fight and you took the belt from him. Yeah. What was his name? Uh, Eric Martel Braholi. Eric Martel. Was he the champ for a long time? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe one fight, but he, he he was a big tough guy. Like he had fought he had fought he was way higher ranked in the world than I was. Like way way higher ranked at that time. So since you beat him, where, did, where does your ranking move to? My ranking flew up at, at, at right after that fight. I was like 31 or 32 in the world. Oh wow! Yeah. And then and then I beat a guy. Well, that fight. So I black out. William, please wake up. Nap time is over. I black out for like 40 minutes, 45 minutes the first time. And then the set, and then I see the ref finally wave the fight. And uh, I came to, celebrated for like two seconds, blacked out again. And I, I wake up in my dressing room with my two buddies standing in front of me like, yeah, you fucked, that was an amazing fight. That was an amazing fight. I'm like, like what the fuck just that? After every fight, do you go to the hospital as like a precautionary? No, no. They, they check you. They do a doctor checks you. I probably should have went that night, but just because it was such a war, we, I took a lot of big punches. Are you worried about head injuries in boxing? Like very mental, mental. Very. But it's just like your brain is just like your wrist, or or just like a shoulder, or or you know whatever the uh, ACL, and you know what I mean. You have to give it an allotted amount of time to heal. You can't get a big punch to the head, rattle your brain, and then go a week later and take another big shot like that, or else a, an accumulation of those is going to make oh. you not, you know, not be able to use your fingers or, or wipe your ass or, or anything, you know? It's, it's no bullshit, and especially in my weight class, one punch, like one punch and you can't see anymore, or one punch you can't talk anymore, or one punch you can't walk anymore, just one punch the right way, or the wrong way, I should say. So what does it what does it feel like to win a fight? To be like, honestly, man, there was a there was a article in the Toronto Sun. Country says, knock. Country says the KO is better than sex. <laughs> I like. I was like, I, my buddy's like the writer for the sports. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like I, was, I thought that was off the record, but that was the, that was like the front page of the Toronto Sun last year or two years ago. <laughs> and there's no feeling. There is no feeling like it in the world. When you feel your fist land flush, like you know the shot, you know the shot landed. He's going down. There's, you know, four to eight thousand people just screaming your name. Nothing like it on the planet. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool, man. What's the worst injury you've had? Oh, I broke my hand like six places, yeah. one time, and then broke it like four places the next time. I broke my nose like six times or something like that. Wow. I haven't had, I've been lucky, blessed as far as, you know, not being, not being hit really, really hard. Like as far as head injuries and stuff like that, I've never, I've, I think I've only had two concussions in my life and they weren't even from boxing. So you're saying that you don't tape up your own gloves, they do that for you? Yeah, the, the commissioner, 
the commissioner has to stand in your dressing room and make sure you're not putting any metals or anything like that into your hand wraps. Yeah. And they tape it up, sign it, and then they put the glove on. They watch you the whole time. You're not allowed to go to the bathroom by yourself for, like, hours before the fight. You're not allowed to go to the bathroom by yourself. You're not nowhere. You can't go anywhere by yourself. Just to make sure. And they have to, like, watch you. They have to, like, watch you do everything. I'm like, buddy, you're going to come in here and watch me, you know, give me a break. He's like, I have to, man. The, for the first couple of fights, it's weird to have. So it's just, it's a, it's not if, it's when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. So wait, out of 88 fights, how many have you won? 12? No. <laughs> I was like, uh, that doesn't sound uh, that great. <laughs> Emily, how do you, you win well, I've lost. Or I've or lost you? eleven. <laughs> that you is wow, really? Yeah. You've only lost eleven. Yeah, and three, oh, wow. three to the same guy, the American uh, heavyweight champ. Really? In, in the amateurs, yeah, he went to the Olympics and everything. So Could you do that? Go to the Olympics for Canada for boxing? No, I, it was 2010, and I was eligible. Like I was number one in Canada, or yeah, I was number one in Canada in 2009 or 10 anyway it was it was either wait two years or three years to go to the olympics and keep having to like it's expensive as an amateur i had to fly myself to halifax buy my hotels buy all my food all this stuff you know so it was uh, fly to montreal fly to here bc all this stuff to for fights so it was really really expensive so I, it was either turn pro and start getting paid or wait another two years mm. to go to the olympics and represent right go pro is so you can't Go to go the Olympics pro. as a pro? No. Oh, okay. Boxing is the only sport that you can't do. You can't go pro because uh -huh. there's such a jump in in uh, there's such a jump in like experience and talent and just the way that the fight happens. It's just so mm -hmm. so different. Amateur to pro. It's really when you say something's amateur, it's like not not as good. It really accounts like that. It's really like that in, in boxing. <laughs> like so, a lot. how many years have you been pro? Uh, uh, six years coming up on six years. What's the average age of like the other, like the fighters around you in the world rankings? Are they around thirty-two? Some yeah. of them younger, some of them older. Some of them are a bit younger, some are a bit older. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm right in my prime as far as heavyweights go. We age, we age slower. Like the little guys throw thousands of punches in one fight. Yeah. You know, they're getting hit hundreds and hundreds of times in one fight. But I'm only getting hit like. A, Fuck my last fight or my last four fights. I haven't been hit once. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. You're just my, dodging them. My la yeah, dodging them and, and just knocking them out quick. My last four fights haven't accumulated to two rounds of boxing. I just knock them out. Shit. With the club, it is like a brick though. When you like you said, when you put the hand wrap in and all that stuff, it's like a fucking brick. Still yeah, I want to do there. one out there. It's just been a hectic couple of weeks, yeah. <laughs> but I do want to do the thing out there. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. All right, I drove like I get, I've got to travel all over North America basically. It, when I was Texas State champ, they paid for everything. I flew, like in 2009, I flew 17 times all across America. Everything paid for, everything paid for, just because of boxing. Got to see Venice Beach, like L.A., Kansas City, all the way from Florida, Tennessee, Louisiana, Texas, all over, New York. And then since I've been pro, I've paid four trips to, like, Halifax. I went to Halifax last mm -hmm. year for two months. I was in Montreal for three months. Wow. Paid for, right? So between all this, like, like, this is a pretty cool lifestyle. This is pretty epic. Where does Big Brother Canada fit in? Like where? Right up there. Yeah. Yep. Like, where did your desire for BB Can come from? When I was, like, 19, 20 years old, I was in the States. And my girlfriend, it was like, she's religious watch. She watched it every fucking day. I'm like, ah, uh, get out of here. Get out of here. And then I just sat down, watched one episode, and I was literally What season hooked. was that? Who was in that one? Oh, see. Well, it was 10 years ago or so. Was this the first year you tried out? No, uh, second year, mm. I think, or third year, second year. I really don't remember. Mm. That's the only. Th that's the one thing. Uh, taking thousands and thousands of punches, it it hurts your memory. Yeah. Yeah, it hurts your memory. I don't mm. remember stuff from from my teenage years too much or my early twenties. Does that scare you? Yep. Yeah. 
yep, but I'm committed now. And if I don't get to where I want to be, my life won't be a success, I feel like, right? Like, if I'm 40 years old and I haven't done things that I wanted to do and my money, like, I haven't got my money and stuff like that, I feel like my life would be a huge failure. failure. And I'll let people down, right? Like, I'll let my family down. And I can't do that. Just can't do it. When do you see yourself retiring? Like 36. Yeah, is that the typical age? That most well, boxers? that's most boxers try to push it out till they're 40. Yeah. But it's just, I, I don't want to be punch Punched drunk. Yeah. Like I said, one punch, you lose everything. You know, you can die. Yeah. Or, or you lose your seer, hearing or sight or yeah. motor skills or whatever. Uh -huh. But one punch, you can lose a lot. So I don't want to, I don't ever want to be that way. And I figure by 36, I'll have a hell of a nest egg saved up. Mm -hmm. Did you watch Southpaw? Yeah, I did. So sad. Yeah. So Cried. Good. You ever watched the Million Dollar Baby movie? Yeah. yeah. Southpaw? Basically, any boxing movie that's out there, I've watched it. Oh. Million Dollar Baby is a good one. <laughs> it was a great movie. <laughs> have you ever heard of, of Gladiator? But with not the Russell Crowe one, it was with Cuban Gooden Jr.? No. He's an awesome actor, though. Oh, it's one of the best movies ever made. It's called Gladiator, but it's not the one. It's not the Gladiator one with Russell Crowe. It's a boxing movie with Cuban Gooden Jr. Mm -hmm. Amazing movie. Amazing. Really shows the struggle. Like it's tough, and you got you got hundreds of people telling you, like you should just get a real job. You know, don't do this. It's not worth it. All this stuff, and then you got like a couple people telling you push harder, push harder. It's tough, man. If you weren't doing boxing, what would you be doing? I don't know. Like, if you had to have a normal job? I MMA. Could. I don't think I could. What? MMA. It's for birds. What about that movie about the two brothers having to fight each other? Oh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. One's doing it because he needs to support his family, and then the other one's doing it to, like, save his life because he's dying or something. Like that. It's a really good fighting movie. Uh, I'm sure the title will pop in my head and I'll tell you. I don't remember. Fighting Brothers? <laughs> I think, uh, no. Is it called Brothers? No. Oh, because I know there is one with like Tobey Maguire and somebody else called Brothers. But I don't know what it was. I about. Yeah, the one is called Four Brothers. Four Brothers, that's a great movie. Yeah, that is a good movie. Mark Wahlberg. It's Mark Wahlberg. He's sick. He gave me this. He gave me this thing right here. Mark Wahlberg gave you that? Yeah. Cool. Oh, just through through acquaintances. That's cool. I want a man who look like Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing. Like I got, I've sat courtside six times at Raptors games, met all kinds of people, crazy people, <laughs> met Kobe. Corey Joseph, DeMar DeRozan gave me his game war jersey and signed it. Like, some good. pretty cool shit's happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I wouldn't tra I wouldn't change any, uh, any at all. There's still people, haters and stuff like that, but I, like, uh, telling me, tell me no, not to do it, not to do it, but, like, to get a real job still to this day. Still to this day? Oh, yeah. yeah. Get out of here. Seriously. How did you get into boxing in the first place? Uh, I got a hockey scholarship when I was 15 and, and moved to Florida. And then I played my high school, graduated high school, and uh, <coughs> we, we did some dry land training, like no, off, the ice, off ice training with boxing. And I just, it kind of it kind of caught, I, I boxed before and I fought, like I fought people before and like with gloves on, did boxing before when in Canada. And I was really good at it, but I never thought, I'd never thought that I would uh, take it serious like or anything very, like that. So I, I, I walked yeah. to the gym and three weeks into my training, this guy, Eli, I'll never forget this guy. He was a mountain, like a fucking mountain of a man, scary human being, hair everywhere, just like monster. And I was 17, little baby faced, chubby kid, you know, and I was terrified of him and they were like, Oh, you're a big kid. Why don't you jump in the ring and spar a little bit? It's like working out, like technical work. So why don't you jump in with Eli and spar? He's got a fight coming up. I'm like, fuck. Uh, okay. Like I didn't want to look like a wussy, so I was like, okay. So I get in there and I'm like, I'm literally shaking, like definitely shaking in the in the corner. Ding! 
and he comes across the ring, throws a thing, and I just throw a left hook. Whack! Down he goes, knocked clean out on the ground really? like this. I'm like, oh my god! Like I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. The kid's like, ah, or the, or the old the old Dre's like, ah, kid, you're good, you're good. Don't worry, that's what you're supposed to do. Eli's like out on the ground still. He had a fight coming up too. He couldn't fight, and uh, he never came back to the gym. This guy, he was pro, and I was three weeks into my training. <sighs> so that's when I kind of the the trainer was like, you got something, kid. You got something. So. The Great White Hope. <laughs> That's what he called me. I'm standing in a gym. I'm standing in a gym in South Florida in the ghetto, like in a, in the hard ass ghetto, all black and Mexican and Puerto Rican and everything but a white kid. You know, standing there, and I'm the only white kid. The trainer, or the the trainer was white. The owner was right white. And he's like, "You're the Great White Hope, kid. You're the Great White Hope." I'm like. Like, looking around, like, please don't say that. Yeah. No, please don't say Because they used to say that back in the day. All all the fighters were, were black or for or Mexican or something like that. And the one white guy that would come around would, you know, and, and did good. It was like, I think it was Rocky Marciano. And they called him the Great White Hope. But it was like, it was a racist thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I fuck, I'm like, please don't call me that. Please don't call me that. So, yeah. Then Sounds he's like a movie. It is, oh, it is a movie. It's going to be a book and a movie. It's epic. And then I'm going to, then he goes, so then my trainer goes, it was, again, this was right after I knocked the guy out. He's like, if you want to take this seriously or if you want to, you know, if you think you want to do boxing as a, as a career, move to Texas. And because it has, they have a deep pool of talent, a lot of like tough kids there. And uh, if you start winning and maybe, you know, be, maybe become Texas State champ or something like that, you might be able to take it a little further and go pro and stuff. So I moved to Texas and, and two-time Texas State champ. I fought the one time I fought five times in a week and my eye was swollen shut. I was a bouncer at the time and uh, I go to, the, get, go to the fight, knock my guy out quick, the first fight, knock him out quick. Go back to my bar, celebrate where I was bouncing, celebrate, get shit face wasted. They call me in the morning, oh, this guy backed out, you got to fight again today. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm all hung over. Go, it was a tough fight to get through, but I won that fight. And then Thursday, that was that was Monday, Tuesday. I got Wednesday off, then I had to fight Thursday, Friday, Saturday for the championship. I couldn't even imagine fighting hungover. I did it. I can barely go. I to did it on Wednesday too. Like I fought Tuesday, <laughs> tried to didn't get drunk Tuesday night, and then relaxed. I didn't think I was gonna have to fight again until Saturday, so I got shit face drunk again on Wednesday. Boom, called me again. I had to fight on Thursday. Oh like, ugh. and then that was a war. My eye was like swollen shut. Uh, on, on my fight for Friday, my eye was right sw totally shut. And uh, the, the, that the mess up like your. Oh yeah, I couldn't see shit. Like, what is that called? Peripheral. No. He was, he was throwing. Peripheral this, isn't it? Yeah, he, it messed Do up I my call? vision because <laughs> I couldn't see at all. Like your, I don't know, uh, what's that called? A little you bit more specific, to... Emily. Yeah. Like, if you close uh, this eye, know. like, your um, depth, perception. depth perception is, like, all messed up. Yes, Because it your eyes balance it in the middle. It did do that. Where do you live now? Uh, well, Niagara Falls most of the time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that where your family is? No, they're back in, back home in Maydoc. Like, it's Where's like Maydoc? two and a half hours northeast. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, What's Maydoc close to? Belleville. Oh, okay. Or Peterborough. Like, you should know where Maydoc is. I know. But people in Lindsay kind of just stay sh sheltered. Like, in Lindsay, they only worry about what happens in oh, Lindsay. Okay. <laughs> no. I, yeah. I never go there anymore, so... No. Never. Why would you? <laughs> I mean, my dad lives there and my family, but. <laughs> yeah, no. I love Niagara Falls. It's fucking so awesome. Yeah, I love it. I go to the bird sanctuary all the time. There's a bird sanctuary? The, the biggest in North America. Oh. Birds are actually creepy, so I don't know if yeah, it's I that hate cool. Birds. And then there's. Yeah, no, I take that back. That's not cool. Yeah. The biggest, uh, yeah, they're horrible. I got a bird stuck in my hair once. They're amazing. Oh. Popping me in the face. I'm trying to get out. Oh, right. <laughs> it's cool, dude. I, lo I love the stories. <laughs> That's I can funny. listen to stories all day. That's funny. So cool. I always got pooped on. There's a yeah. bunch. I, I just happened like. That's what I mean. I when know, I do but I don't think it's book, worked yet. I'm gonna have to really. <laughs> like I swear I've been pooped on like 12 times or something. It's so like, gross because it's so like hot and liquidy, and you're like, oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's like black stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> there is. I think, what do you think is maybe about? <gasps> oh. What time? Looks like it's oh, about 10. Oh, no. Looks like it's about 10 o'clock. He eventually figured it out. 10 o'clock, 10 20. Like time for a servant. Yeah. Time for a servant. <laughs> Uh, My sister's friend in elementary school. She was just like looking word. at the sun. Like, oh. Ew. Oh, in her mouth. Oh. Ew. What are the odds of that? Like, imagine how, having that kind of accuracy. That bird was actually trying to get oh, it yeah. in there. Time for a sermon. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> that girl right there. Ten points. Watch this. I could. I could dig it out. I could go. Yeah. For it. Yeah. Mine. Mine. <laughs> It's a hell of a story, the Moses story. It's great. Just, Are I, you ready? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you ready for your story? I can tell the story of Moses, yeah. yeah. Take your time. <coughs> so Take your time. Make sure, don't right. miss Yeah, go don't slow. Miss. Tell us all the details. Yeah, what did Moses look part. like? Don't miss any part Cindy. of Cindy! All right, let me get some coffee. Moses it's time! Sermon time! <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say it? Sermon. Oh. It's time for sermon a sermon. Sermon time! <laughs> 